David Barber. How you doing? Good. Um, first time I heard you rap, I cried. <laughs> dude, you told me that before. <laughs> Thanks, dude. You know, man, uh, I was just tears of joy, of course, you know, because I was just so happy that somebody was rapping to a jazz band and not in a gimmicky way. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Like, the way that you rap is like a s soloist. It feels if, like hip-hop kind of came from jazz, you know, and I feel like you're bringing it back full circle, mm. you know? Sure. And so when I heard that Dusty the Grill album, the music, the it was radio. It wasn't Dusty, it was Radio Phoenix. Oh. David Barber and Radio Phoenix. That's right. Yeah, yeah, That's right. Yeah. Um, Dusty the Gorilla. That was just the band that we were doing like improv shows. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. It was Radio Phoenix. I just remember yeah. the Gorilla on the front. Yep. <laughs> that yeah. is Dusty the Gorilla, though, right? Not really. That's okay. just like, that was an art project of mine in high school. It was a symbolic self portrait. I drew a gorilla playing stand up bass. Oh. And I just like, I was like, yeah, that needs to be on an album cover. So that's that. Cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, just the fact that it, it was happening, like the mo I felt like, like we, we were talking about before the interview, we were talking about how metal died and turned mm -hmm. into dubstep, turned into EDM, and I just felt like we were losing our way. Yeah. And when I heard that album, um, the Radio Phoenix album, mm -hmm. I felt like the clouds parted, you know? It was like, you know, um, there's a lot of stem and roots that go into making the the blossom and the fruit, you know. And I felt like I was like, you guys, like the fruit, it's it's blossoming, you know. I mean, yeah. you know, and I'm I'm just flattering the heck out of you, sorry, yeah. but I'm just saying like that's a, yeah. I I'm thankful to be here and witness right. what's going on. Um, and your your uh, new album is so sick, man. Um, Thank you. I just want to know more about your muse, you know, like that character. Uh, that is you and, and comes to you, you know, who is that person? Sure. What are they like? Shoot, man. It's a big question. And honestly, I don't know. I can talk about it, but I can't tell you the answer. Yeah, that's But, uh, I mean, like, musically, like, what comes through musically, I feel like um, it kind of stems from me just being young and riding my bike around my little hometown and listening to music all day, all the time. If I'm not in school, I was riding my bike around, Beats by Dre, and it started with just like hip hop, you know what I mean? Like it was like Lupe Fiasco and early Black Eyed Peas and you know, the and Kanye. Stuff. Yeah, conscious stuff, whatever that yeah. means. But like, yeah. yeah, and and like that started when I was like 12 or 13 years old. And I just kept digging and looking like, oh, you like that? You might also like this. Oh, you found Doom? Oh, The Roots, Com like, oh, all these things. And I just explored for years. Like that was like literally 12 to 18. That was like listening and absorbing music was literally my favorite thing to do yeah and then like I started on guitar when I was about 16 17 and I got into jazz and then I started listening to jazz the way I used to listen to hip-hop when I was about 18 or 19 so then I started exploring jazz the same way like oh like here's Charles Mingus here's Coltrane like oh what what is Ornette Coleman oh my gosh this is what I've been looking for you know what I mean just getting deeper and deeper and finding more and more things people moving insane energy in ways that I've never heard before yeah and so like listening listening to a lot of it and absorbing a lot of it at a young age is uh probably the roots of like what you hear from me either in my voice and what's coming out in the lyrical content or in like the composition or like you know what i mean yeah it's the space for sure yeah like you I see you up on the mic and you're like it's like you're you know i mean that's what freestyling is supposed to be it's like you know you can stack all these lines and sound really good and like impressive but you're like you're more clearly, as even a performer, you can see you're clearly more concerned with the ride itself. You know, you're like in that moment, you're just like, you know, we're gonna work it out. Yeah. And then it'll come through and it'll start flowing. There's moments that'll come up, you know, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. It feels feels real. It feels yeah. like you're surfing the wave in the moment. It's not a performance. Sure. You know? It's yeah. Like, yeah. Totally. Um, that new album, Passionately, yo. Uh, to bring everybody in town, all Lots these cats, cats, bro. <laughs> it's so good. I'm like, yeah. this is. Uh, I want to see the super band perform. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? <laughs> like, totally, dude. Totally. Uh, God, David Barber. Everyone's like, all right. This next song, it's like, here comes Farnell. This next song, here comes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Uh, just like a showcase of like, hip hop and and jazz. You uh -huh. know? Um, sure. Cause a lot, cause a lot of cats rap, like like I said, like there's a lot of jazz beats out there. You know, mm -hmm. and a lot of cats are like. When I'm playing beats all the time out DJing, people come up and, hey, you know, can I rap? You, know, you got a mic? Yeah. I'm like, 
No, I don't have a mic. Uh-huh. I do have a mic. <laughs> but I don't, though. You know? Yeah. But it's like, what, what you do up there um, is like, uh, that's what, I mean, that's what I want to hear, man. You know? I yeah. want to hear you, the, the struggle and the sweat and the, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah. the, the real, the real, real. Totally, you know? totally. And I feel like, like, kind of like on what you're saying, there's a lot of people that are also rapping in like a jazz setting, even with a live band. But I feel like what you're hearing that like you're talking about right now is the like the interaction. Like a lot of rappers are not musically interactive or musically explorative. Even if they might be freestyling, they're still not listening in, to everybody. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I f- so I feel like just like the sheer amount of like uh, collectively improvised jazz that I've listened to, like leads me to doing that. You know what I mean? Do you see other? Do you have you met other cats around town who rap like that? You when you hear them, you're like, that's it, that's the thing. Huh. There's definitely cats that I hear around town that are like, that are listeners and that are like making the music um, spontaneously like that. Um, so yeah, yeah. There's a few. There's a few R- rappers, say. MCs. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Totally. I got. I, I gotta. I gotta. Um, gotta meet some of these cats. <laughs> sure, sure, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, what are your plans for future music? You're in Anjuna right now, um, mm-hmm. doing like a folky thing. Yeah, it's oh, uh, that's yeah, cool. yeah. I'm calling it folky free jazz. Uh, it's like pretty, pretty heavy, music, musically wise and lyrically wise. Um, they're kind of like uh, most of the songs just have like a few stanzas of sung poetry, mixed and then long bouts of improvisation. Um, a few of them like that, and then, you know, it's just a pretty raw, intimate, little four-song project that I'm working on. So is it, like, um, like we were kind of talking before the interview, a little guitar, a little strings, with some, like, banjo, uh, mandolin sounds? Is like um, no banjo vibes? or mandolin. Ukulele, though. Ukulele is on one track. Um, so, like, that, that's kind of, like, where the folkiness is. Yeah. One track is just one guitar, is, like, guitar, and then a few of my voices. It's a little, little haunting. Um, but then the other ones are definitely more, one of them specifically is very much more modern jazz sounding. You know what I mean? It's like upright bass, Wurlitzer, kit, and sax. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of different sounds on, on this project. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to hear that. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be interesting. It's going to be called For Riley, My Dying Friend. Because it's, uh, it's uh, my dog, Riley, who is currently dying. He's like 13, big black lab, very old, great dog. Yeah. Uh, the main song is called Riley's Theme. And, uh, yeah. That's cool, man. Yeah. That's cool. Um, was that, like, uh, inspired? Is this, is this an old project, or is this inspired recently? This is a new, fairly new project. Yeah. All the music on it, I started writing uh, last summer. Yeah. At the, at the, at the, like, the earliest, you know what I mean? Some of it I wrote a couple weeks ago, right before I recorded the main session, you know what I mean? Uh, so how, how free are we going to expect this? How free? Yeah. Bro. <laughs> very, very free. <laughs> <laughs> yes, very free. Yeah. I mean, some some songs more than others, but like the peak is full out. It's heresy, bro. <laughs> it's, Good, cool. It's blasphemous. Cool. I've been seeing some of your Instagram posts. You know, you'd be like uh, somebody friend over. You're like, we're just having a little. We're just getting one real quick. <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah, that's probably me and my homie Stevie. We've been playing free jazz. Me on piano and him on the bone. We've yeah. been doing that for a few years now. Yeah, that's yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, what do you, so what do you think about the scene right now? What I mean uh, Before the interview again, um, we, we talked too much before the interview. We did talk a lot <laughs> uh, Before the interview we're talking about how like things have changed um, I Disappeared for a while to learn how to record and by the time I came back um, It was really great timing because there was uh, Soleil's and 1905 mm-hmm. and all these uh, young cats playing great jazz, you know yeah. um, but then and, and I feel like with the uh, uh, sold out music festival and just all this, mm. it was like Portland was blossoming. Um, and then just COVID was like, whoosh, you know, yeah. are, are, you think we're going to uh, heal? You think we'll be back? You know, I mean, uh, we're not going to be, we're not going to get back to any place that we were, but we are going to like go forward in a new direction. We're definitely going to go forward. You know what I mean? We're not like, we're not stuck. We're not stopped. The wall has not come up. Uh, we were just going this way, and now we're going another way. You know what I mean? And it's like, it sucks, bro, because, like, there was a lot of momentum right, you know, last last February, right, yeah. before everything shut down. Yeah. A lot of momentum. In the so. scene, like, personally, there's just, like, a lot of momentum. And all and it went, 
going nowhere, right? Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, we're we're gonna keep going. Yeah. The like, city you, is gonna grow. How sure. do you feel about shows? Like I I have been playing a couple shows and they're socially uh-huh. distanced and stuff, but like. It's a little weird. I don't know if like I should be doing this or not. Right. Or, like I mean, what's just your personal take on it? Like, Dude, you know? I mean, my take. Um, I feel like there's a limit, you know, to how like how packed you can get a play. Like you're not gonna like fill up Jack London right now. For sure. You know what yeah, I mean? For sure. But like you know, rooftop spread out situation i'm all for it dude like i'm itching for it like when yeah. you're spinning at botanist like i'm so hyped to just come and like spit on a few beats or like kick it with the band yeah um but yeah dude i've been just longing to do a show because like that was like my favorite thing my favorite thing to do in the world back yeah. in the day just do those shows you know what i mean uh some flies trying to get drunk on my wine <laughs> some uh, bug wine i'm like i'm gonna eat you dude <laughs> But no, right. man, I feel you because it's like that. That is my favorite thing too. Is like um, I love being in the studio or whatever. But it's like I want, I'm like a skater at heart. You know what I mean? I want to mm. like hang out around the bowl and like watch people either eat shit or like kill it for the yeah. day. Yeah, and you know hype them saying? up and yeah. like feed the energy. Sure. Yeah. A skate sesh. Yeah. Or even like like some new kid comes in, you see him with his board, but he's like you know be kind of like, checking them out. Be like, drop in. <laughs> you know, you can do it. Like, drop yeah, in, you yeah. know? Like, and he might skin his knee or whatever, but you, you know, pick him back up uh-huh. and be like, yo, come back next week, yeah, you know? And, yeah. and uh, I don't know, I just, that's so important to me. I just, uh, it, it's a shame to think about a world where people are afraid to be together. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, you know? Right. I feel like that's coming. I mean, like people are getting vaxxed, man. Yeah. And like, you know, hopefully that means that things are going to open up and people will be less afraid to gather because I feel like the gathering and the communion of people being together is the thing that is important about music and sports and church services. Like, it's not cool. Like, sure. It's like a, a substitution to have it on a screen on a zoom meeting or whatever, but like the actual valuable part of these things is the gathering, you know, whether you're going to a soccer game or whether you're going to your nephew's ballet recital. Or, you know what I mean? Like, For sure. it's the gathering of people. So we, yeah, like, we need that. And I think, I think it's coming back, bro. Cool. You know, I hope. <laughs> just for some part of me in the back of my head, I'm like, man, what if people are just scared now? Like, forever. forever. <laughs> They're yeah. just like, next time we go into crowds, we're kind of like, oh, you know? like Yeah. You know? I mean, I haven't, I haven't totally felt that, but I haven't been very much of a crowd, mm-hmm. you know? But there has been, you know, places where, like, um, I went to a show the other day. My homie was like, we're playing at so-and-so bar. And um, I just imagined, I uh, automatically assumed it would be outside. Uh-huh. But it wasn't. Hmm. It was, like, in the, like, closed back room of this bar, you know. Right. And so I go in, and I'm like, and uh, so already we're walking through the bar, and there's a bunch of people, and so I'm kind of like, you yeah. know. <laughs> kinda, like, Hold your breath yeah. a little bit, yeah. <laughs> and it was like, walk through. And I'm expecting to, like, come out into, like, a smoking patio and be, like, uh-huh. out back. But it doesn't. It just goes into, like, a closed room yeah. <laughs> in the back. So all these people, like, all shoulder, you know, and I'm just, uh-huh. like, uh, I, like, kind of hold my breath and watch half a song and leave, you know. It's mm-hmm. like, um, yeah. But uh, I don't know, you know. Right. I feel like I, like I haven't been too worried about it myself. I'm not worried about getting COVID and being messed up from it. You know what I mean? So, like, yeah. I feel like people are going to be, like, you know, do things at your own will. If you feel like going to the cramped room in the back to see music, like, that's, just, like, do your thing, man. Like, you know, um, I don't know. Yo, I feel you. Yeah. I feel you 100%. Yeah. yeah. We'll just see how, how the how, how the population reacts. Right. <laughs> we'll see. We will see. Um, but, yo, I like that analogy, the skate session to live music, because I, too, am a skater at heart. Yeah. And I have never, like, necessarily thought of the correlation there. But uh, I like that. I well, like that. For me, sometimes just a lick, like, one lick is like a kickflip, you know? And mm-hmm. I'll be like, can I play, you know, uh-huh. you know, like, and I want to be able to do it in all 12 keys so right. that at any moment, it's like whatever obstacle I'm coming up on, I can be like kickflip, uh-huh. you know? And and, I, and not that all my lines are canned, but right. um, it's not like when you see a skater out there, like he just goes up and kicks his board and it flies all over the place and he lands on it. It's like, right. that's like practice. Sure. You know? Oh, totally, um, totally. And, uh, yeah, man, I just, uh, I, w- I want to get this, I want to get the crew together. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, for a skate sesh. For a sesh. For a music you know? set, yeah. Yeah. Totally. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. 
So who else have you been playing music with these days? Um, well, shoot. Sometimes, like, at my house, I'll have some cats come over and, like, play some duo guitars or, like, have a bass player. Um, the homie Liam Hathaway on bass. I don't know if you know who that is. I love Liam. You know Liam? Yeah. Where he and I just went to the mountains the other day, like, looking for morel mushrooms. I saw that. Didn't find any. Had a good time. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've been playing some tunes. Uh, the homie Stevie Eaton on trombone. We'll be playing some tunes. Joseph Mamarello came over, just played some guitar. My friend Cece, she's a, like a cellist and a beautiful songwriter, poet, like an incredible creative. She came over here. We played some music yesterday. So um, this has been the spot, huh? Uh, here and there. Like this close to the chateau. It's, it's a little bit too close to the chateau. What happened with the chateau? Fall apart? Yeah, did you, did you know anything about it? There was a, so the house next door burnt down completely oh. huge our house almost burnt down but the firemen saved it so just half of our the side of our house was charred a little bit and we had flooding in the basement due to them spraying spraying all the water and like a whole bunch of problems um the landlord essentially evicted us so that she could fix the house or whatever but like yeah. we think there was something fishy going on um with her motives but uh so we got evicted pretty much right as corona started so it was a very stressful time but uh, so yeah, we all disbanded. Everybody, everybody, you know, fled, landed you, where they landed. You did know? you go home? I, I went and lived with my parents for a uh, yeah, mostly through the summer. Yeah, came back up here, lived lived up the hill in this area again with some other cats, Charlie Brown and Peter Peter Knudsen and uh, some other homies up there. Cool. But uh, yeah, You're found my way here. Rocking out after breakfast, like <laughs> we had some jams. We had some jams. Yeah, yeah, some good ones. Man, yeah, hopefully we can get you out to Botanist. Uh, it's been, it's been, there's been some really good nights and then some dead nights. Yeah. Um, but uh, when it's when it's good, it's on fire. Um, I, I've been there a few times and it was good. I think last week was last week was really sick. Um, yeah. This band Ren came out. Okay. Um, a girl singer and like a acoustic guitar backing mm -hmm. her up. It was yeah. like you know small, um, just two piece. You know, it's uh -huh. cool. But they're doing like soul covers and stuff and then mm -hmm. I was playing beats and um JP like every once in a while he'll be just really feeling it and he'll mm -hmm. just start he'll you'll hear him like over in the corner start like <sighs> you know oh yeah I'll be classic like, JP yeah. yeah and so we're we we're like dude grab the mic bro mm -hmm. fucking get on the mic yeah. yeah he sounds good yeah he does he can sing some licks bro yeah he can sing he's always like uh, singing about girls. He's like, baby, mm, I love you. Mm. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, my trumpet player uh, friend, Eric. Oh, I met Eric last uh, time. He's a really nice guy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's been fun. I don't, I don't know any other. Uh, I rap too. It's a secret. Rap too. You told me. I know. Uh, but I don't do it often, mm -hmm. and it's not my like mo, you sure. know. But um, I. Also being like a jazz musician, you know, when I, like, I, I, that's why I hear your space. I'm like, oh shit, he's got the space. Like, yeah. he can do it. You uh -huh. know, it's like a superpower, you know? I wouldn't say, I would say it's tapping into the will of the music and not your own will. Because a lot of people are writing their own will through the music. What, like, what am I going to do to sound good? Like, nah, like, what are you going to do to, like, to contribute to the overall sound of the music. The music has its own will. And if you're serving your own, you're not serving the music. Yeah. And not that I'm always serving the will of the music, but I feel like at times I can find myself tapped into that energy. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, sorry, I cut you off. No, no, no. You do it, though. That's why. That's, like, that's why I call it a superpower, because not everyone can do it. Oh, damn. You know what Thanks. I'm saying? Like, uh, and uh, once you... Like, all these people always want to come up and rap, you know? And I'm just mm -hmm. like... I'm like because I know you're, they're doing exactly what you're talking about. They're just like, you know, they have some lines that they've been practicing forever in their mm -hmm. car and they want to like just, <laughs> but then they rap like way too long, like yeah. through just through the whole song, you know? Yeah. And it's just like, ah, yeah. it's not like what the song needs. Oh, no. yeah, <laughs> like come up and take a verse and like, or, you know, like you always love how you like, just get a hook going, you know, for a little while, you know? It's just like... That's because, like, I don't know what I'm going to say, you know? Like... But it's just the trance, bro, you know? Maybe sure. I'm, like, oh, over over uh, mystifying it, but it's just like... Nah, I know what you mean. You know what I mean? Or you're just like... And then something else kind of comes to you, you know? Uh-huh. You just got to open that space up and be af not afraid to operate in that space, you yeah. know? But you have to be, like, experienced enough to float. <laughs> sure, dude. I'd say it takes a lot of experience. I've spent hours and hours and hours freestyling first of all like to beats and whatnot and then hours and hours and hours of doing it with live bands 
and like so much experience. Like, had I, like I could be uh, the greatest writer, you know what I mean? The greatest rapper that, you know, writer of raps. <laughs> but like still, if I didn't have that experience of like delivering this music with, in these settings, it wouldn't sound the same. You know what I mean? It wouldn't sound the same, so. Yeah. Um, I'm, I, I'm gonna imagine that it varies um, from moment to moment, but how much of a given performance is canned? Not, I say canned as in like it's a negative thing, but it's not. What do you, you mean know? canned? Like, um, like it's in the can, you know, like pre-written. Oh, uh, okay. Um, with, uh, so like with the Dusty the Gorilla show, um, those shows were 90% improv. Yeah. Uh, like instrumentally and vocally. Cause we were literally, for a while, we were doing like at least a show a week. Like house shows, parties, things like that. I mean, we did like the jazz clubs a little bit like Jack London several times, but like a lot of it was like underground kind of raw shows. I'm yeah. like, I'm not gonna write, I'm not gonna use written material for that. For sure. And I'm not gonna write a whole new set of material every week. Absolutely. So I'm gonna make it up, you know what I mean? Yeah. So the Dusty the Gorilla stuff, mostly improvised. Yeah. If you're coming to like my show, like, oh, this is David Barber's show, not Dusty the Gorilla, then um, I'm gonna do like probably like 60 or 70% composed music and yeah. songs, but then definitely improvise on the composed songs as well and also make up some stuff. Yeah. So those shows, I would say about 30% is off the top and the rest of it is premeditated or, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's cool because like I, um, I know enough of your material that I can hear it, you know, you Copy of the you know, I'm just like, hey, yeah, uh -huh. you know. Uh -huh. uh, but then I hear you go off with it too, and I'm just like, yeah, that's good. Yeah, um, yeah maybe I, I'd love to, uh, like, do something one day, you know, like, um, everybody's busy, but, you know, like, uh, I'd love to have you on a beat or something one day. Bro, I'd be down. I've been trying to get on some beats. Um, I would love to, because some of your beats are mad fire, so. Cool, appreciate <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah, appreciate it. Um, yeah. Uh, craziest thing, man. Uh, I, I'm living in the, I just moved into Milwaukee. I'm living in this new house and, um, uh, L you know, Luke, um, the drummer from JC Proof? Yeah, Lucas. Hi. Yeah, Lucas, yeah. Yeah, or I know him as Lucas, yeah. Uh, <laughs> he moved in next door. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. Um, friendly guy. <laughs> yeah, Heck super yeah. friendly guy. Uh -huh. It's crazy. It was just like, what a small world, man. Yeah. I like, feel like uh, I met you guys like a couple years ago and we keep crossing paths, you know? Mm -hmm. it's just like, I'm like, what? Yeah. So crazy, man. Um, small world, yeah. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm excited to try and uh, get back to KMHD, they're going to be opening up soon. Mm, um, okay. Now that everyone's getting vaxxed and stuff, um, yeah. they they have a performance space in there. Oh, really? Um, it's like hmm. super top secret. Uh, okay. Super top secret. <laughs> uh, it's like a television studio. Oh. It's super sick. Dang. Like, there's like two levels, and you can like look down, and there's like a fast stage, like all the lights. Uh -huh. um, Ooh. Super nice sound set up and everything, and yeah. they—it was supposed to already be running, but Corona came in. Mm -hmm. But um, they're gonna oh, start, so it's new. They're they gonna just start doing shows, okay, like live shows on it. Bro, bro, you, that. you know what I'm saying? Uh huh. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, uh, if if we, if we're all like pushing fighters toward the ring, like you're my guy. I'm like, put, I'm like David, put, put this to. guy up here. You I'd know, like to. get him up there. Yeah, yeah. you know, um, heck yeah. Uh, well, man, fucking, uh, it's fun to rap with you. I suppose yeah. we wrap it up a little bit. For sure. Uh, yeah. Is there, is there anything else you want to say or like, you know, uh, let people know something you got coming out or mm. where to find you? Or? Yeah. I mean, you can find me at, um, at David Barber Music. That's on Instagram. That's really the only social media that I use to, uh, promote my music um i'll link it in there yeah Bandcamp, david barber uh the new album is everywhere you know passionate apple music spotify itunes whatever else um and yeah if people would check that out it would mean a lot because i think it's i think it's um powerful music you know obviously it's mine so i think that but like i truly think that you know and i yeah bro it's it's a uh 
it's the cutting edge. I think it's the cutting edge. Thank you. Know? And I'm like, I'm, I'm, and, I, and I'm coming to talk to you about it. So it sounds like and I'm like being really flattering. I'm not even trying to flatter you. <laughs> I'm just trying to talk shop. Like, yeah, okay. it's the cutting edge, dog. Thank you. Like, yeah. it's so sick. Um, and I just want to see more, man. I just hope. Dude, to see I got more, more coming. I got the next full length hip hop album already brewing. Yeah. So. No, dude, you're gonna you're gonna go somewhere with this. Thank you're you. Go somewhere with this. It's sick. Thanks, Luis. Right. Appreciate it, bro. Cheers. Heck yeah. Oh shit. You're joking. <laughs> I'm gonna put it to you like this, yo. <laughs>